City of Stevens Point Bicycle and Pedestrian Street Safety Commission meeting, recorded Thursday, June 6, 2019. So we'll call this meeting to order. So we'll start with the roll call. Rourke. Here. Fahrenbach is excused. O'Mara. Here. Dugan. Absent. Horsky. Here. Corbin. He's also excused. excused. Yep. He wrote in. That's three. We have a quorum. Okay. With quorum, we'll move on to uh, a request from me before we get to item two, and that's to amend the agenda to ask for adding item nine as in discussion for next meeting because it's July 4th. So do I have a motion to amend? Yes. Is there a second? Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, the motion carries. So item nine is now uh, discussion July meeting. And then nine is adjourned. Sorry, 10 is adjourned. Okay, item two, persons who wish to address the committee for up to three minutes on a non-agenda item. Mr. Borski. Um, whoops. Just a some small point of order. Um, I was going through the websites, if you get that down to you guys. And the one, I think it's on the minutes page of the Stevens Point page for, it, it has us listed still as a committee. Okay. The agenda page is correct. It says commission, but the... Oh, I see. Okay. It's just we'll one word, but it is important. We'll forward it on to the website coordinator. That's it. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up. Yep. Are there any other non-agenda items? Welcome, Commissioner Dugan. Thank you. Thanks. I will mention one then. Uh, tonight is the first Levitt Amp concert downtown Stevens Point at Piffner Park. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because um, I'm going to be leading a slow and social family bike ride. So anyone can come join me. Uh, it's part of my job, so I'm just going to be doing it anyway. It starts at 530 right at the Piffner Band Shell area. Uh, it's going to be a slow ride, less than six miles, geared towards families. And then we're going to return back to the concert venue. So feel free to come out and then obviously the concert series lasts all summer and so this bike ride will also be all summer as well so plan on that in the summer sometime any other non-agenda items I'll mention one more then all right so raw coming up right across Wisconsin is August 16th through the 18th uh, this is much more into your long distance riding, cycling. Um, it's from La Crosse to Green Bay. So this is one of the, uh, the big rides hosted by the Bike Fed. 100 mile option and a 225 mile option. Uh, either one or two days long, depending on what you choose. One of the rest stops is actually in Plover at uh, Pakawa Park. So that's considered an overnight spot as well as a host location. Um, you can go to rideacrosswisconsin.com to find out more information. Any other non-agenda items? Okay, moving on to item three, report of the April 3rd and May 1st, 2019 meetings. Commission, any? I move we approve the uh, minutes as published. Second. Now that there's a second on the table, I do have a possible amendment. Let's see, I had uh, do, 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 April 3rd. I think, um, yeah, it was April. I was not in attendance, but it doesn't say that. So if you can add Mark, add or Mark uh, Rourke as excused. So I had a conference in La Crosse. Um, La Crosse? You don't have to give your excuse. You just say you were excused. I was excused, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your defense. Any other discussion or uh, edits to the minutes? Okay, so there's a second on the table. Is uh, Do we need to amend the motion with the adjustment? 
Sure. Uh, I change my uh, motion to it is the minutes are approved as published with the exception of Trevor Rourke uh, not uh, being excused from the April 3rd meeting. Being excused or not being excused? <laughs> not being excused. Being excused. All right, cool. I'll, I'll is there a second? second that, yes. <laughs> okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Excused. None opposed. Okay. That was all in favor, so minutes are approved with that exception. Item four, uh, National <clears throat> Bike Month Guide, uh, ideas, strategies, and resources to organize in your community. So as probably most of us know that National Bike Month is May, and we're in June now, uh, the reason I brought this up to the commission is because maybe now is a good time to start planning <laughs> for next year. <laughs> Because this is uh, one of the things that a lot of communities do, especially if they're seeking a higher uh, bike-friendly status through the League of American Bicyclists. Um, they have a robust guide, which is starting on page 9 of the packet. There's tons of ideas, tons of content in here, um, a lot of examples, uh, even tips on certain things, anywhere from... Um, doing community bike swaps to smart cycling classes, mm, do having bike mentors locally, pushing a local bike challenge as opposed to a national bike challenge, uh, bus on bike, bus on bike demonstrations, of course uh, bike rodeos, something we're all familiar with, open streets events like Ciclovia, or uh, even Ride the Drive in Madison are examples. Graduation parade, bike to the movies. There's just a ton of information and ideas in here. I'll tell you what, Trevor, if I was going to promote a bike month at Stevens Point, I'd do it in June. We have terrible weather for biking yeah. in May. <laughs> and, and well, we people are itching to get out, aren't they? No, no, but we historically do. I know. It's not as good. And so yeah. who says that we can't determine this is a you know these weeks are set by people in the southern tier nationally yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> larger no, no, populace no. larger populace right no no it's, it's southern tier if you look at who the guys are that are running this it's southern tier or california so we're in a little different climate why don't we say you know we're special well, do it this month you know when during May, I went online and was checking out all kind of sites. Yeah. There is no consistency oh, for even May to be the bike month. Because right. I, I agree, I, mm -hmm. some is in June. There's no specific National Bike Week or Bike to Work Week. Mm -hmm. um, it was all over the board, mm -hmm. including June being a, recognized as a bike right. month. So yeah. I agree. I don't know why. Uh, is it, I don't know, do we have to declare it? We don't necessarily have to. We can plan for it, either one. I'd, I'd plan for it for next year, but I would shoot for it being in June. I think we'd get better participation. Well, can the mayor just? He just pro pro proclaims it by resolution. Could do that. That's what yeah. I'm saying. He could do that. He could do that, and there we go. We're done. Yeah. There you go. Peace. Easy peasy. All right, so Mike, you're responsible for talking to the mayor. Go ahead and put that bug in the air. You want me to draft it and have them declare it this this month? Well, I think it's neat too because school's out. Good. Essentially, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll try and trudge down there. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be Stevens Point Bike Month. This is National Bike Month. Right. But. Well, again, when I went online, I I mean the discrepancies all across the board. I couldn't find any mm -hmm. consistency, even even between some of the bigger organizations. Seriously, it's like yeah. okay, well, pick one. <laughs> right. Because I, I had missed our, I was excused from our last meeting, but I was going to send you an email on that, that it's like, we didn't do anything in May. Well, yeah, but sure. you are now, like tonight, you know? Sure, there's. That's a super kickoff. There's lots of things going on now, yeah, right? Yeah, kickoff for June. Yeah. yeah, very good ideas. Um, feel free to plug that to the mayor. Also, uh, the main reason I'm bringing this to the commission was not only for discussion, but also to uh, give more uh, information and ideas to the public as well. If they want to do anything, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be commission-based at all. It doesn't have to be any single person here on the commission. 
um, if anybody wants to take up any of these ideas, this information is already online uh, in the agenda packet. And obviously there's, as uh, Commissioner Borski pointed out, there's tons of information on the web. So feel free to take something and run with it or ride, depending on who you are. Have we done anything with uh, uh, school beginning, you know, with the safety to school and stuff? Or we're supposed to be educational, so yeah, do we, in part. can we work on something in the summer mm -hmm. to present to the schools? That could potentially be a second goal that we haven't discussed, but... I'm just throwing it yeah, out there. Yeah, sure. Why not? Because it's long overdue for me to speak to uh, Chris Budzinski of uh, transportation with the mm. district too and see if it's the schools, so. Okay, any other discussion or thoughts on National Bike Month? Mm -hmm. Stevens Point Bike Month? <laughs> he'll just say Bike Month and uh, he'll, he'll bike declare month. it Bike Month. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, chair? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm especially interested in um, the educational aspects of, of the uh, bike month, whenever it is, mm -hmm. or um, I'm also very interested in um, safe routes to school. Mm -hmm. um, so I think any of those um, topics here would be, I, I would really hope that we could do more and more and more. I mean, we know from our Stanley stream street experience that mm -hmm. um, so many people don't know the, the rules of the road don't or if they do they don't follow them and and we don't have you know the, the kind of police enforcement that that we might um, we can't so sure I think as much education as we can give people or police compliance or police compliance um, Kathy weren't you certified and I was that one time Just, yeah what was it again to the bike Federation? It was through, yeah, League of American Bicycles, yeah. And, and, tr and through Madison, yeah. And what yes. was the title? Oh, what was my title? Well, that you were certified. I was an instructor. In, no, I mean that you, what was the certification or? Well, it, was through the, it was through the League of American Bicycles. It was a licensing thing. Oh, well, that's what I was asking. Yeah. What was the license mm -hmm. for? Yeah, so all of us could do that. I know, but was there any specific? Yeah, we had to go through training and then no, we... No, but the title of it was, <laughs> were you an official instructor, mm -hmm. advocate? What was the name of the title is what she's getting at? Oh, I don't know. I okay. don't remember. Is that something you're considering recertif recertifying or...? I think so, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I think you have to get recertified or you have to renew every couple of years and I didn't do that. But I mean, we need to have more than one person doing that mm -hmm. too. I think uh, this lends itself to... Uh, one of the next agenda items to actually work through the goals that this commission sets for the year, the rest of the year anyway. Um, one being that's on the agenda already, but maybe this is another second goal, education uh, as you know, a catalyst through the school system. Yeah. So would you wanna take lead on that? Sure, <laughs> I, would, I would do that. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Um, so if you wanna. Uh, how, how you want me to do that? Sure, how yeah. Could, yeah, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any other uh, thoughts on this agenda item or discussion? Okay. We'll move on to item five. Portage County Countywide Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan Prioritization Model. So final proposal there. Um, I had edited the original proposal based on the feedback at the last um, last commission meeting and and I reduced and I simplified a little bit and, and I found something uh, we can improve on oh yeah what you got bullet, uh, three the third bullet down the impact on related budget hmm. the best should be that we reduce the budget that should be ten and the worst would be high cost which would be zero Oh. Because 10 is the most desirable. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I would so say. So reverse those. In, in it, but I would say instead of low, uh, low cost, I would say it reduces the budget. For instance, if you uh, propose 
a, a reduction in lane width, you cut down the capital cost of the project. Mm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Reduces. That's the best case. That would be a 10. Budget. Mm. And the worst case would be a high cost. Yeah, good idea. Other edits, ideas, thoughts on the proposal? I did want to mention, too, is I did discuss briefly with Director Badoon uh, this proposal. I don't know if you had a chance to read through it in more detail, Scott, or if you wanted to mention anything. You can say no if you did. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I, I did spend some time looking through it, but I, okay. I think, you know, um, I, I think it, it reads just fine. Okay, I mean, cool. Approach, people take many different you know, approaches to how they get to it from simple to complex. And this seems, in my opinion, to kind of fall in the, in the, the middle. middle, which is a, a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, if you didn't see, I did reduce it. Um, originally, it was 42 initial recommendations. I reduced it to 36. And then the final used to be seven reduced to now six in this final proposal. Mm -hmm. Trevor? Any other? Yes. I would just note again that I think there's value in having this be a policy that you guys can certainly approve, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it needs to be forwarded to council for approval. Right. Uh, that would give you the flexibility if you wanted to change the procedure protocol from one year to, or to the next, yes. then mm -hmm. you would have that capability to do because so. Because our action is when we report it out, not on how we get there. Right. So we could basically amend four and five, correct? Sorry, yeah, so four, we could remove, five, we amend it after consensus by commission, basically. Mm -hmm. so, I'm not necessarily talking about the recommendations that come out of this, I'm just talking about this policy. Yeah, I know, yeah. yep, yeah. just the model. Yeah. So like item five, yep. if it consensus by commission, after sorry, after consensus by commission, the city will list these right. final goals, object, et cetera, et cetera. And then removing after approval of item six. Expect us to uh, yeah. Does that still say the same basically? Yeah. Or do you want to revert that further? Item six. It's so removing after approval by a common council. I don't think it really matters. Okay. So we'll have that, and is there a consensus that with amendments we move forward with this model? Yes. I would second that. Motion. Okay. Third, fourth. Okay, cool. Consensus of those that are in tenants. Great. So with that, we'll keep using that, and this is something that um, we may or may not get to next month, but it might be ideal to try it out. or maybe a reduced version because we're halfway through the year. Can't do too much, right? But that will lend us to the next agenda item unless there's anything else on this. No, okay, cool. So item six, 2019 potential goal number one, which would be assessing and recommending bike parking at popular transit stops. So page 42 of your packet there. And um, uh, Associate Planner Kearns has already laid out and populated a uh, goals and objectives model we can work from. Um, I had pulled this directly from the bike ped plan, so it's a recommendation from the plan already. And as we, most of us know, the plan's been, it's five years old now. <laughs> so we have lots of work to do as a city, I think. Obviously, this is another thing that could be chipped away at. Um, so again, page 42, goals and objectives, nicely laid out uh, in the SMART goal uh, format. And then page 43 kind of gets into more of the details. 
Uh, but again, what we're looking at today is really making a recommendation to staff to start the process. Kyle, I don't know if you want to up update us or just maybe give us a short snippet about working with transit so far? Yeah, so this, uh, again, came to fruition as an example that was provided by Trevor for creating this mechanism for uh, documenting these goals and objectives and then carrying them forward. And this example, I think, could serve as a realistic goal that's pursued in the near future. And I think because we, we didn't have the policy that we just discussed in place yet, we could certainly pursue this because, again, I've already inputted into some of those templates that we've previously approved. Prior to doing so, however, I did reach out to Transit, uh, knowing that they have expertise in regards to the bus stops and wanted to see how they manage their infrastructure. And unfortunately, they do not um, uh, manage or track this information. They don't have any data on the popularity of bus stops or um, you know, those maybe that may pick up more bicyclists um, or ridership of persons who utilize a bike to get to the bus stop. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I think we can certainly pursue uh, trying to come up with a mechanism to document that information and then hopefully make, make a recommendation based on those findings on some locations that may warrant some bike parking at these bus stops. Uh, the other thing to note is that, um, you know, Transit mentioned that there are a lot of stops where the businesses may have uh, bike stops in the vicinity, and so we could certainly document those as well uh, with photographs to kind of put together a, uh, you know, a, an overview of all those stops. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, from our point of view, um, uh, in the community development department, this can be done either jointly with community develop or uh, with uh, public works, or perhaps using some intern resources that we have to get the field data, uh, and then to come back and, and update this body as we move forward. Great, Trevor. Can, yep, Commissioner. One of the things we could consider is the number of uh, destinations where people are apt to park their bicycles based on the types of businesses or occupancies. Yep. Because if you're in a completely residential area, people have a place to keep their bikes. Right. They're not going to be parking their bike, you know, at the bus stop. They're going to go to where they're going. Uh, Most likely. Uh, it depends on routing, though. So it'd be, they'd be, I agree with you. I think that it's a variable that needs to be considered. But if you think about the last mile, because the routes are thin, they're not as robust as they could be because demand isn't high enough. But they still would, you still wouldn't leave your bicycle at the bus stop. It, you'd, you'd ride. If it's not a popular spot, then we wouldn't even want to put one there anyway. Yeah, that's right. what I meant. Yeah. And I'm yep. saying if you want to prioritize, prioritize based on occupancies. Uh, now, if you're in a real, Trevor's right, if you're in a real, real sparsely populated area, you, people may want to ride their bicycle to the bus stop and take the bus to downtown. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you are downtown, you're, you want to go shopping or mm -hmm. you're out on uh, Crossroads Commons, you might want to have a bus stop there. You might want to have a bike rack there. Right. And I, I think seeing that the, with the uh, paucity of data that we have, that's one way to do it. The only other way to do it is if you have an intern is go to the, you would uh, uh, do a origin destination survey at su certain key bus stops and see, you know, you ask people, where'd you come from? Where are you going? What is the purpose of your trip? If there was bike parking here, would you park here? Hmm. You know, if you have a summer intern, you could do that. At, and then you, what you do is you do it in different types of uh, occupancies, and then you uh, go and uh, translate that and saying, well, we picked the perfect typical <laughs> occupancy and all the other ones that are similar. Mm -hmm. But it at least would give you a trend. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. I'm giving you sort of a DOT way that we do that sort of <laughs> stuff. Right. Commissioner Borski. Hi. Um, 
just an update which sort of ties into this. Now, you know, Wisconsin Rapids still has that shared bike. Uh, the university had the, those orange bikes for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Citibanks supports that kind of program. Oh, can you just, where are we or the university? It's sort of with the bike sharing, you know. Bike share, yeah. Um, Is from, that in the works again? It was dissolved. Yeah, from my knowledge, it dissolved because it was a, a capitalist model that shifted to scooters, electric scooters. Right. That was the reason it shifted. Mm -hmm. um, I see Rapids still has one, and I see Edward. Yep, they had a different model. Their uh, original model in uh, the River Riders bike share in Rapids right. was uh, volunteer-based as opposed to a venture capitalist company in California. Mm -hmm. okay, so I they actually maintained and used used bikes and then did all the work volunteer-wise and then partnered with local um, health care as well as businesses to fund, finance it. Uh, but they've shifted to Zagster um, now, which is a kiosk system. Um, so I don't know where Zagster is headed, if they're going to stay with kiosks, even well, though they're I really see expensive. More, more city or Citibank is, you know, starting a program too. And the okay. reason I'm asking, I'm not trying to get off topic here, it sort of ties into that. I just want to know sure, yeah. if that shared program. Is yeah, so the, will be in effect in point again. Yeah, the, the, from my knowledge, the university is still exploring it. Um, it is part of their new bicycle and pedestrian campus plan. Mm. So it is uh, basically a recommendation of their plan. Because I could see that impacting what we're talking oh, yeah. about now, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you think about it, the end game is you're catering to people for that last mile, mm -hmm. whether they're coming or going to the bus. So either they're visitors or they're residents, it doesn't matter. So yeah, it, it all plays a part. Okay, I was just, thank you. I was just lost track of where we were. Yeah, there hasn't been any public announcements or updates really, because they're still exploring, figuring out what they're gonna do. Do you sit on that committee too? No, it university? doesn't exist. Oh. They, they developed a plan and then they disbanded. Well, I thought there was an active committee, sorry. I uh, they might form another one, I'm not sure. But um, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other thoughts on this um, potential recommendation to staff to start working on this goal? I think this is a good example to start out with and see how it works. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. You know, I think it's, it's will, the staff will find out if it's workable or not, and they probably will change the way they fill it in without asking us, and that's fine. There you go. Thumbs up. <laughs> you got a half smile from Kyle right there. Thumbs up. I got had about a quarter smile. So. Quarter smile? Yeah. No, not the bigger one. All right, good job. I Scott? Like to, I like to point him out to get the bigger smile. <laughs> Put him on the spot. Uh, did you have any of the feedback, Director Badoon, as far as logistics or public works with this? No, I'm sure I mean, Kyle and I can talk about it to see as far as staff resources and kind of, you know, approach we otherwise want to take. You know, probably worthwhile that we sit down with <clears throat> Tom or Susan and work some things out. Sounds good. Thank you. Commissioner Borski? Um, that's going to sound silly, but that's okay. So all bike parking is still free, correct? Even Currently. around campus? Currently, yeah. Hmm? Okay. Well, I, you know, things change. It's like a legit, legitimate question, and sure. Vehicles. And mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, just thank you. Unless it's a kiosk bike share system, mm -hmm. then it's not. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, then you, the, uh, the, the parking is free, it's the riding that costs money. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Unbundled somehow, all right? So, Kyle, do you need a vote from us, or is this basically oh, consensus? You guys, can, you guys can certainly take action on it if you'd like. Okay. So is there a motion to recommend that staff uh, assess, investigate this goal and objective and set of object objectives for bike parking at transit stops? So moved. Is there a second? See, I would go bigger than this. I would say that... Well, you need a second before discussion. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All of them. All of them. <laughs> yeah, is there discussion on this item? I would prefer that we said that the uh, that they proceed 
with uh, assessing and recommending uh, different uh, proposals uh, in the same form that they have shown us in this sample. Do you need to elaborate or is that something you can email in later? That's fine. Because that's the way I read this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talk about that, but it was sort of presented as this is an example of how to proceed. Mm -hmm. And I think that our, our goal is to tell them you can proceed. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to do. Okay. Because I think that, you know, assess the bike park. We're really not accomplishing anything. What we really want to do is something that's going to get uh, authorize uh, Kyle and Scott to start looking at the ones they think that may come up and need attention sooner rather than later. Okay. So that means we, if you want to change, you need an amendment on the motion or well, that's how we can't? It, that's how it was understood, that we would follow suit with this template and uh, carry out this goal and keep you guys informed as it progresses. That's what I understood, too. So yeah. when okay. I, when I uh, so moved, yeah, <laughs> I so moved, I understood it to be that way. So All right. I don't think that it needs to be in the Any way. further discussion, then? I'm fine if people have a good understanding of what's going on. And I'm Not sure that, that Maria, Maria <laughs> will make it all clear. I wrote all of it down. Oh, nicely done. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, staff. This will be really cool if we keep moving in this direction. All right. Now to look at item seven, country club drive improvements. Mm. So there are no... Um, documents in the packet. Um, Scott, I don't think there was anything in the public works meeting coming up, but there was the previous, correct? There was a special meeting, yeah, which is just to decide the direction that the council wished to go uh, relative to Country Club Drive. Uh, as you're aware, there's an, uh, uh, a contract in place that obligates us to pay 70% of any improvements for the, that stretch of roadway. And given the condition is in, the town wants to take action on that and make repairs. So we're just uh, beginning the, the steps of that. What was otherwise decided was to make temporary repairs this year to give time for proper planning and design for the uh, permanent changes and repairs to the road for next year. Do you remember how roughly how long that corridor is? It's about 1,700 feet. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that'd be in addition to the capital projects you already have planned for 2020. That's the way it'll be presented to council. <laughs> okay. However, they approve it, we'll see. Okay, uh, depending on approval. Okay, so as far as this commission is concerned, you might bring back uh, designs for that as well as uh, the other 2020 concepts. C correct. Okay. okay. Yeah, and then we'll just have to see what it is. It's you know it is the town's you know road. You know the contract is that daily is the is the roadway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's arguable relative to any appurtenances to that that are not directly related to the pavement surface itself, whether that's, you know, where that works into it. Um, so I guess that still needs to be sorted out. But first things first, we need to come up with repairs, which is what we're talking to the town about right. to take action for for this year um, okay. before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Sure. You see, Scott, when I looked at it and I realized it's a paving project and the way it is, I think that the... Uh, durability of the pavement and the relative uh, safety of the cycling and uh, pedestrian public would be well served by putting in a uh, uh, at least a six preferably an eight foot shoulder and the way that's set the, you know the way it's in there that's probably the best you're going to do because you got all those drainage concerns mm -hmm. And that'll keep you that'll keep you from having the shoulders drop out, and it'll get rid of shoulder maintenance and all sorts of stuff. And it will provide accommodation, at least for pedestrians and bikes. Right. I know when I was a uh, scout leader talking to uh, children that were taking bicycling uh, badge, both as Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. That's the section from uh, the mo motel at Main Street down to uh, Stevens Point Country Club was one we got the most questions on. 
Mm. And one of the questions they always asked was, because there's no good way for them to make the turn mm. off the bike trail, was, would, yeah, are we uh, unlawfully trespassing when we go behind the motel in their driveway? Because it's a lot safer. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. And, and my advice always was, if it's safer, do it. Mm. But there isn't, and I, I went out there, and there just isn't a good way mm -hmm. to make that turn. And, and that turn, there are a lot of children who are biking to Stevens Point Country Club mm -hmm. to go swimming or mm -hmm. play so, golf. Yeah, yeah well, obviously. You need to keep in mind that the section we're talking about doesn't go all the way from State Trunk 66 to Carroll's Lane. It's only that section that lies within the township because the city's not planning to do anything with, with the part that is, is ours. Okay. In order to do any expansion or changes there, we would have to acquire additional right of way. So that's not mm -hmm. in the works. I can understand year. that, but I, I'm just saying that yep. because there no, was concern about that oh, area. No, I, I just want to be clear. It just seems because I know I, we get calls in the office too, and people identify that they want to see that section completed. Right. Yet people need to understand that I'm constantly explaining <laughs> to people that this would increase whatever we do, but wouldn't complete that entire section because that's outside the scope. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's okay. All. That's completely reasonable. All right. Thank you, Scott. Are there any other questions or concerns for this item? Even though it will come back to us in the future sometime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is staff update. Staff update. Item eight. Thanks for your help. <laughs> I have nothing uh, unless you guys have questions in, about something in particular. Otherwise, if Scott has maybe something to update us with. Were you going to mention the target master, master plan? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why I asked for your questions. <laughs> there you go. So there were, or there have been now, two public input sessions for the uh, grouped target area master plans, one for Division Street and one for downtown. <laughs> and the, uh, the consultant is putting together the final plans but there's still the option to provide feedback to the city and to the consultant. If you access the city's website, um, you can search target area master plans and it'll bring you to the primary website where there are uh, feedback forms that you can submit for each area if the public is interested in providing that feedback in relation to the plan. There are also copies of the plan on the website, the draft plans that I would encourage the uh, the public, especially if they're going to provide feedback, to take a look at. And uh, for both plans, they are expected, final plans expected before the end of the summer here. Question regarding the feedback. Um, just looking on the website, it looks like the, the summary of responses are now on there. And there's no feedback form anymore. Unless I'm missing it somewhere. I would have to ask the consultant if perhaps the they have closed the feedback. Uh, to my knowledge, it was previously on there. Okay. Um, I don't know when and if it was closed, um, but I can certainly uh, consult uh, the consultant when I get back to the office. A double consultation. Because uh, what I just said would certainly not apply then if they have closed the, the feedback okay. session. Anyone get a chance to attend the, the most recent? So I think we did discuss division a little bit already. Yes. But this most recent, May 23rd. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I didn't. Um, I was just back from a trip. But um, I've studied it pretty thoroughly, what the uh, consultant has put out. I think, it, I think we need more feedback. I mean, this is a massive project, particularly downtown, I think. And I'm, um, I certainly would have some things I want to say about it, and I have friends who do. Thank you. Any other feedback? Um, one I would like to mention is within the, um, the link that says maps and other resources in Dropbox for the May 23rd meeting, you can actually see all of the uh, uh, graphic boards that they have at the meeting. And you can, yep. again, if the, the feedback uh, session is still open, which uh, Kyle's going to look into. Um, 
I wanted to, I, I did submit feedback, but I wanted to bring to the committee, excuse me, the commission, uh, a little bit of disappointment on the Clark Street um, options. So Clark Street, it just gives you uh, an existing as well as, of course, a single option, whereas Centerpoint has two options and Water Street has two options. It's not that it's a single option that I'm disappointed about, it's the fact that there's no bicycle facilities recommended at all, even though there's 70, 71 feet of right-of-way. Hmm. So I thought that was pretty um, disappointing. Um, so I wrote uh, kind of a, a re-proposal of what that cross-section could look like. And there's, I think, a few different options one could take to accommodate bicycles. Um, specifically, it's not necessary to have 12 feet of travel lane per direction. And I understand the desire to do that because you're in one way sort of accommodating bicycles, but you're not because of the door zone. So the door zone reaches from that parked travel, excuse me, parked car lane into the travel lane itself. So you're basically creating a very dangerous corridor for bikes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, long story short, um, I think that needs some work um, as, a, as far as it concerns the commission. I also had some questions about the um, the riverfront itself. Did mm -hmm. you take a look at that? Because I mean, the, the Green Circle Trail goes through there. Right. Path. And and when the massive um, pavement was introduced at the point, so so to speak, they call it the point. Oh sure. Yeah. The concepts. Where all of the buildings are clustered right up to the and and the pavement appears to go right up to the river's edge. And I'm wondering where the path would go. I mean, I've been on um, Sure. I've been on, on um, boardwalks before uh, as a bicyclist and it doesn't work, you know, if you've got lots of people down there mm -hmm. um, sitting, walking, and then you've got bikes trying to come through, it's pretty hazardous, so. I, you could, I think you, even though it's an intersection, basically, you can design it well, like for example, different colored pavers specifically for the path yeah. that extend between the I Green even Circle Trail. That the path went through there. I mean, right, it's kind of, I mean, it's obviously a concept, but um, yeah. it does open up into what you're saying, yeah. confusion yeah. Uh, and an intersection, which could be dangerous. I Court. guess you could call it an intersection. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, pedestrian. I, pedestrian bicycle I, I looked at that, and I remember that we designed for most of the time. We don't design for riverfront rendezvous. Except for the bathrooms. Sorry, long story there. <laughs> well, that's because people make choices in prioritization. If you design for the worst case scenario, you get a lot more asphalt than you ever wanted and sure. a lot more concrete. Yeah. Yeah. You have to accept that sometimes your facility will not be operating optimally, and that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. But it's important that for the other 360 days a year mm -hmm. that it operates acceptably. Mm -hmm. but, right. Uh, imagine if they tried to design the streets to take the uh, traffic that's leaving the fireworks. No one would say you should do that. <laughs> or the holiday parade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peak you know, times. It, and, and I think that that's true for our facilities too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is, will this operate most of the time we and, and the nice things about when it's really congested during riverfront or something, it's obvious to everybody, and they're going to walk their bikes. And the lunatic fringe would be out there anyway. Same with every regular day. Yes. Lunatic fringe is a traffic engineering term. Oh, there you go. For people who are going above the 85th percentile. Of course, the purpose more, of this is yeah. to bring more and more and more people, and particularly tourists, to the riverfront. Sure. Hmm? All the time. <laughs> but Except you're not going to, Riverfront Rendezvous has a larger population <laughs> than we have in Stevens Point. Yeah, I know. Sure. Yeah. And so that's not the example we have to go for. No, that's right. Yeah. We have to go for, there are a thousand people in the park, it can handle it easily. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and we, when we design, we have to design f for 
other than the worst case. We, uh, we object like crazy when they design uh, motor vehicle facilities for worst case. Mm -hmm. It's the same for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Are there other concerns or thoughts about the master plan? Did you mention the timeline again? Sorry if I missed it. When I don't have an exact projected date, um, time no, no, deadline within the next couple months here. Okay. Should be before the end of the summer. Okay. And will there be a final public session or to wrap things up? I'm not sure if there'll be a, a public input session, but certainly it'll be presented to the public in one form or the other. Okay. Potentially governance meetings. Any uh, ideas, co uh, concerns from the public? No? Okay. We'll move on to the next agenda item then, which is a uh, discussion of the July meeting. So July 4th is uh, the next fall on date. Do we want to push our meeting to the 11th? Would that be okay with the commission and staff? Good for me. Works for you? I think so. Yeah. I'm game. Tim game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's fine. He's good. <laughs> okay. I guess. Okay. So um, let me let me. We have consensus on that. Not yet. Double check. Sure. The eleventh will work. Okay. So consensus is we will move our meeting to. July 11th, 2 p.m. All right, with that, meeting is adjourned at 2.48.